Thank you, Tracy. Uh, pleasure to be here. Um, so I'm here to give you an update on the CSE. Well, in a word, uh, we're busy. 2017, yep, we were busy. It was a record year. We've had a record year almost every year, but this one uh, exceeded all others. Uh, so at the end of the year, we had 35 companies with uh, a market cap each of over $100 million. Uh, it was the first time that our companies collectively, and there were about 310 on average uh, last year, I would say, uh, that raised over a billion dollars in financing. And due to the volume of our trading, it was the first time that our 300 odd companies traded more on a couple of days in December, uh, more than all of the companies on the, on the TSX Venture Exchange in each of volume, value and trades. So we had a lot of trading. Here's uh, our five-year trading trend. Uh, I think it's fair to call this a hockey stick. And there aren't too many hockey sticks that you'll see in a graph that aren't projections. This one's historical. So we're happy with that. So you can see there's uh, active trading, but is there liquidity? As a small stock exchange, most people seem to assume that there's going to be less liquidity on, uh, on the CSC and on other stock exchanges that have um, a much bigger list. Uh, turnover is a measure of liquidity. It's uh, one that's easy to find. You take the value of the trading of all the shares uh, and you divide that by the market cap of the companies whose shares are trading. Uh, this is a monthly uh, slide. And I think you can guess that the red line is the CSE because it's the highest on the slide. And I may not be showing it to you if it wasn't, right? <laughs> Um, the black line is the TSX, and, and it's a more stable uh, trading environment, be, partly because it's larger, partly because uh, it's uh, large cap stocks, uh, and typically it runs 4 to 5 percent a month turnover uh, in trading. Our peak was over 30 percent in December. Yes, um, that was powered by, um, largely by cannabis. Some people claimed it was all cannabis. It's not true, it was only about 90%. Uh, it's obviously come off uh, quite a bit since then, but uh, in, in March, our turnover was, was 13% uh, compared with 5% on the other exchanges in Canada. So we're not actually showing this to tell you that our market's more liquid than their market. Uh, what we've always told people is that the stock exchange doesn't give you liquidity. Liquidity is a function of investors, interest in trading the securities that, that are listed on your exchange. Obviously, there was a lot of investor interest. Uh, all of the investors in our marketplace are part of the Canadian capital markets. So we have the same dealers, the same investors. Uh, we do have different companies. So that was uh, a very big year for us. Uh, this slide shows uh, growth in listings. Uh, on the CSC. Uh, it goes back to um, 2007. Uh, we actually launched a couple of years before that, but um, every year we saw continuous growth in the number of companies listed on our exchange. We had a bit of a dip for about um, five, six months uh, back in 2016, and people were asking me, gee, Rob, you know, the, uh, you don't seem to have any more companies listed now than you had six months ago. We said, well, yeah, you know, um, sometimes we have to delist a few, uh, typically for a failure to thrive. Uh, so I decided, well, well, let's see how the other exchanges are doing. Now, it's a little hard to see because of the, the scale is different. So the scale on the left and the black line is, is for the, um, our competitor, the Venture Exchange. Uh, and uh, the scale on the right in, and the red line is for the CSE. In the past five years, number of companies listed on our exchange has doubled, and the number of companies listed on the other exchange has uh, fallen by about 20%, or 500 companies less than it used to be. So we're fairly happy with our growth. 
And while mining companies do not predominate our exchange, we have several, and they have been growing. Uh, they currently are almost a third of the listed companies, and they represent 11 to 14 percent of the market cap in total. Uh, so it's still a growing sector. Uh, we had 144 financing transactions last year for our mining companies. We had four new IPOs, and the average market cap for those companies grew from only six million up to over 10 million during the year. We also have a fairly robust uh, technology sector. There is currently uh, over 70 companies there. We had 10 new ones uh, came in last year. Uh, so technology as a sector is a, a larger sector uh, on our marketplace uh, relative to the other junior markets in Canada. And as you might have guessed, yes, we also have blockchain. So we've got a growing number of blockchain companies. Uh, it numbers uh, about two dozen at the moment. And they are either owners of the technology, developers of the technology, or they're users of the blockchain technology. Uh, one of them, a global blockchain, uh, shown here is actually um, here at this conference and, and uh, they either are presenting or, or have presented. I think their symbol is BLOC. So do we have any other interest in blockchain? Well, I think there's a lot of people are wondering what, you know, what, what is it? What is it? Is it? Are these currencies, are these securities or not securities? What are they? Well, cryptocurrencies, everybody's heard of them. Um, like fiat currencies are, could be described as a commodity, right? And, and they trade like commodity. Their value goes up and down, just like other currencies, value goes up and down. Now, tokens are perhaps a less known class of, of securities, uh, and they have great flexibility on what they can represent. Uh, this slide says from coins to kittens, but also to equity shares or to com common shares. Now, the regulators, the likes of the Securities Commissions in Canada, jointly uh, called the CSA, and the uh, big brother in the United States called the SEC, uh, they're very much on the alert, uh, watching what's, what's developing this space. Uh, very much concerned about, about whether or not uh, some of these offerings are actually securities and should be regulated as such. Well, to a large extent, uh, we agree with them and uh, that uh, a lot of them are securities and they could benefit from the, the regulation and the transparency that you get in securities markets. Which leads us to possible trading of tokens or STOs, security token offerings. So in February, uh, we announced that we are installing a blockchain into our trading engine. It, it is installed, in fact, uh, that will allow us to trade security token offerings on our marketplace, and they will be able to uh, clear and settle instantaneously. Uh, this will be quite quite a big change in uh, in clearing and settlement. So real time clearing and settlement. What does that mean? Well, it means that when the trade happens, it also clears. It's it's done. The money has changed hands. The ownership of the of the security has changed hands. Right. The security could represent uh, a common share. It just needs to be tokenized in order for it to clear and settle in the blockchain. So, um, I guess the other thing that, that I should mention is that, you know, where are we? Well, I said we've installed it, we're testing it, and we expect to be able to open the system up for testing by investment dealers that are trading in, in our exchange uh, by the end of Q2. So when we get to real-time clearing and settlement, well, recently the North American equity markets went from T plus three to T plus two. Now, I was told by someone in the United States that 
that project to change from T plus three to T plus two was a 10 year, $500 million collective industry investment. Well, we can take it from T plus two to T plus zero, and we can do it for a lot less money. Uh, it, it is not going to be a huge investment on the part of, of the investment dealers in order to connect uh, to our exchange uh, with tokenized securities. This will reduce the capital requirements within the equities markets uh, by a significant amount because you won't have that two-day float. Uh, it will also, as you know with blockchains, uh, it, it will eliminate any possibility for errors in, in the processing of them. Uh, this would include corporate actions such as uh, dividends and stock splits. All in all, it should result in a dramatic lowering of costs, particularly for dealers, ultimately for investors and the shareholders of, of equity securities in Canada. So if you want to follow our progress, uh, we have a web page on that and you can, you can go to this web page and, and sign up. Uh, if you don't want to take the time to record what's up there, uh, you can also uh, find it on, on our website. You can look at our news, you can look at our blog. And um, the website is, is just called simply thecse.com. It would have been cse.com, but somebody owned that and wanted too much money. <laughs> and then they're not using it. <laughs> so we've got thecse.com. And if you have questions, particularly about uh, our blockchain initiative, uh, our CEO, Richard Carlton, answers his phone, re responds to emails, is quite available. Uh, he's also uh, leading our initiative uh, in this uh, blockchain development within our trading engine. So he is really the go-to person uh, for questions about it. Uh, I can answer some of the, uh, the simple ones. Uh, most of what I know, I've already told you, but there might be some other things. Uh, if you have questions about that, then I'll, I'll try. So um, my final uh, word um, here at Investor Intel is it's really nice to see that we have several CSE listed companies here. A couple of years ago, there might not have been any, and there might have been one. Uh, and uh, not only that, we have some yet to be listed or soon to be listed uh, companies uh, that are either attending or actually have people involved with them that, that are presenting uh, at this conference. So that's also uh, a very great uh, development for the CSE, and, and we're happy to be here with them. Uh, so you can also check them out at thecse.com. Uh, if you know their symbol, you can stick it in the search field and bang, you get there. If you don't know the symbol, type in their name. Uh, every company's got a page and you can find pretty much everything about them, all of their continuous disclosure. Uh, you can see the order book. You can see 25 previous trades uh, right there on their page. Uh, that's all I have to say for today. Thank you.